I figured it would be a great way for us to come on here and give you some tips in regards to lead generation because I know that that is something that probably a lot of you are struggling with. Latasha, hey girl, I see you. If you guys are joining in, let us know where it is that you're tuning in from. And yeah, as you're joining, we're gonna be talking about lead generation tips and things that you can be doing right now. If you have any specific questions that you want us to answer, just go ahead and put them in the comments so that we can address them. So Brian, you know, a lot of the agents that are in this community, they're like newer agents. Yeah. So what are some tips that you can mm -hmm. give in terms of, you know, lead generation, especially because there's low inventory, maybe they're not so confident with going after expired or for sale by owners. So uh -huh. what can you give Door us? knock, uh, door knocking right now is huge. A lot of people are afraid to do it. More people are home. Uh, our team has been experiencing crazy good results, whether that be East Coast, West Coast. Um, it's incredible, right? If you guys are, are looking for a way to connect with people, the best way, make more contacts, have more fun, and get in front of people and have face-to-face -face conversations, door knocking is by far the best way to do it. Grab a basic script, which you've gotten with Loida, and get out there and just talk to people. It, it, it's gonna... Because door knocking, when you look at it from the outside, it seems like it might not work or old school or, well, you know, it's hard, but it's the best way to learn. When you talk on the phone with somebody, it's very easy for you to hide your insecurities because you're just on the phone. But when you're in person, number one, the other people are going to be nicer to you because they're way less likely to be uh, a dick to you in person versus the phone. But there's so much more at play, right? Your body language is important, right? Your eye contact. If you're nervous, it's gonna be that much more obvious, so it forces you to put yourself on the spot and get better. Getting people's contact information is easier, right? People that don't answer the phone, right, they're more likely to answer the door and talk to you. So I think door knocking is one of the most slept on and underutilized things. People think that everybody's door knocking, they're not. Every time I door knock or the team knocks, we ask them, are you getting door knocked by realtors? And they're saying no, or like once a year, right? It, it just, it, it's not, happening right and it's perfect for you because especially if you're new and you don't have money you can drive your car anywhere park and knock you don't need a special script you don't need a reason to be there you don't need a fancy toy to hand to them to give value forget all that stuff the value is your presence and the conversation that you're going to have with them period now if you're willing to do that then I think you're going to be ahead of the game. There's so many more things you can do but I think door knocking is the best way because it gets you out of the office it gets you out under the sun and especially for those of you who are in nicer areas where it's not snowing, you know, six, seven, eight months out of the year, it's a great way to connect with people. And the most important thing is your brand will become more well-known because people will see you and meet you and shake your hand. You won't be a mailer. You won't be a phone call or a voice over the phone. You'll be a real person live. That's it. So I have another question because I see Daniel. Daniel, I see that you're on here watching. Now, Daniel was in my last five-day intensive training. Mm -hmm. He is, I think, 21. So we have a lot of younger agents or soon-to-be agents that are in this group. And, you know, one of the questions that he had asked is, how do you deal with people that say, oh, you look young or you're young or things like that? Well, if I say you look young, is that really a bad thing? No. If I say you look young, that doesn't mean anything. The meaning associated with that for anybody listening is what you put on it. When people would tell me that, I still get that from clients, especially if I shave. They're like, oh, you know, you look so young, you remind me of my son. That's not a challenge, that's just a comment. Now, if you're insecure about your age or your experience, then you're gonna take it as a challenging comment. The only time I'm gonna take that as a challenge is if they say, I don't wanna use you because you're too young or you look too young. That's a different conversation then. I can handle the objection, that's not a problem. But if people make those offhand comments to you, oh, well, you have really long hair. Oh, well, you wear earrings. Whoa, you have tattoos. Oh, oh, you look young. Okay, cool. Fantastic. You know what? I get that a lot. Anyways, when are you guys thinking of making a move? That's how I handle that at the door. Like, it's, it's, not, it's not a problem. If you make it a big deal, it's a big deal. Because a lot of times when people make comments and they say things and, and you freak out, you'll give tells, right? Subconscious cues. You'll, you'll twitch you'll tighten up, your voice will crack, that indicates to them that you have an insecurity there. That's where the problem is, it's not in the comment. So it's all about how you view it and then what you do in the moments where people say that. Because if you're walking around thinking, I'm too young, I'm too young, I'm too young, then that's the experience you're gonna have. Anytime you don't get a deal, anytime somebody doesn't answer, you're gonna say, oh, it's because I'm too young, when that isn't even mm -hmm. the case. Yes. 
Thank you for addressing that. Because I know, like I said, there's a lot of younger agents and sometimes we have this belief that, you know, our age or the way we look is what's going to stop us from it's an actually advantage. getting deals. It's not a disadvantage. Older people have bad habits set in place. They have less energy. They're not going to work as hard, right? When you're young and you're full of energy and you're vibrant, that's an advantage. Now, after I said what I just said, if you believe it, then it counts. If you don't believe it, then it doesn't matter. And this is why I've always said real estate is 99% what's going on between the ears and 1% execution, right? Because whether you go to Lloyd's Bootcamp or you do any other kind of coaching, the how-to and the nuts and bolts and the actions, it's obvious what we're supposed to do. Lead generate, set appointments, attend appointments, close, negotiate, get to a closing, get referrals, rinse and repeat. We've known that for 50 years, right? The real estate has been conducting the way that it's been conducting. But why don't people execute? Why do people still have certain questions? Well, it, it's your mindset. And if you're around the right people, right? Like our team, Loida, and everybody around us, you'll see how they respond to these things and you'll see what their conversations are like and how they carry themselves. And that's what rubs off onto you. And that's ultimately what, what, what gets you the results. Because I know a million people who use the same scripts that we use and they can't get a deal. Yet we use those same scripts and get multiple deals a month. Why is that? What's changing? The people. It's not the how and it's not the tools. It's the person using the tools. If I teach you how to shoot a gun, you're going to be very good at it. But if I give you a gun and you've never shot one before, you don't know what the hell you're doing. The gun is only as good as the user. You have to remember that. And if you think of real estate that way, you'll do much better. And there's a lot of things going back to what you just mentioned that have to deal with your success because yeah, we all have the same script, but we all have different results. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people set appointments. Some people don't, some mm -hmm. people convert, some people don't. And I yeah. think at the end of the day, it's also like a combination of your communication, mm -hmm. your tonality, mm -hmm. your delivery, you being able to listen to what that prospect is saying and actually be able to logically think and mm -hmm. see if what they're saying makes sense yep. and not just take it for face value. For example, yesterday I was talking to a seller. He lives in the next city over where that area code, the phone number area code starts with 909. Yep. I called from my cell phone, which was a 626, and he told me, you know what, you're out of the area. <laughs> and I said, what makes you say that? And he said, well, your phone number tells me that. And I said, so you're basing my ability to sell a property based off of a mm -hmm. phone zip code? And then he didn't say anything yep. because he knew I was right. So anyway, I ended up setting an appointment. I'll be meeting with him today. But that just goes to show that nothing can throw you off. And you have to kind of be like on your A game yep. to know exactly what to say depending on what people tell you. Well, you know, you know that what they're telling you is BS, right? Mm -hmm. That's just what they're saying. What people say and what reality is is two different things in most cases, especially a consumer when it comes to real estate. Right? What will we do? We'll hear, I want a local agent, and then you try to argue with them about a local agent when we know that frame of mind and that thought process is completely incorrect. Right? So why argue with it right? when you can present a different frame and a new idea for them to understand? Right? But that would be an entirely different lecture. But when you come at it from that perspective, you now stop shrinking or reacting when you get those types of objections because you really know where they're coming from. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and put them into the comments. That way we can address them. Let's see. Another question that I have. How would you take it, Brian? If someone said maybe they're a newer agent, haven't done any deals. Yeah. How can I go and like, let's say I'm talking to a potential seller. Mm -hmm. How can they make them see that I'm the best agent when I haven't even sold anything? Presentation. Your presentation, right? What, what we tend to do as agents, whether we're new or experienced, we, we try to... Um, we try to over explain, right? It's called front loading is what you call it officially in sales where like you, you try to sell yourself too much. You talk too much, you explain too much. That's what a rookie does. So when you go and you present, it's the delivery of your presentation and what you present and how you present it that determines how somebody's going to size you up. It's not logical. If it was logical, then every team and individual that we go up against that sells more homes than us, they would get that listing every time. So what you need to do is inspire an emotional feeling in a seller in your presentation that gets them to say, I want to go with Brian or Loida because I feel like I can trust them and I feel confident in them. It's not about the numbers that you present. It's about the conviction in your presentation, point, period, blank. And your first impression on the phone, how you are on the phone or the door and your follow-up calls, that's what it's about. If somebody says, 
I want to know how many homes you sold and all that. Great. You know what? I'm going to send you a pre-listing package. And then when we meet, we're going to go over everything in detail. Cool. Push it for the meeting because your presentation and how you carry yourself is what sells you, not the logic in what you say. We think about it backwards. I want to defer everything for the appointment and I want to handle it in person. Imagine saying to somebody, look me in the face, Mr. Seller. Based on my presentation today, do you know deep down inside that I'm the right person to sell your house? All right? Now, it takes balls to say something like that. But if I stare somebody in the face and say it to them, number one, I'm okay if they say no. And you need to be too. But very rarely is an agent going to say something like that to a seller that way. That subcommunicates a lot. It subcommunicates expertise, that you've done it before, that you know what you're doing, right? that you're confident. That's what you want. That's what sells. Not, oh, look, I've sold 60 homes in the last year. That's not what sells. I'll beat that guy nine out of 10 times because I know how to communicate better than he does. It's not who delivers the best information that wins, it's who delivers the information the best that wins. Remember that. So what if like a seller or a prospect is mm -hmm. like, you know what, send me a list of all the homes that you've sold. Send, I mean send uh, your, either your team's track record or your company's track record. Okay. That's it. Every, every single one of you is associated with a broker. You have to be if you're a salesperson. So if you work with Coldwell Banker, Century 21 or whatever, get a hot sheet from your, uh, from your broker of any home that agents of your office and brokerage have sold in the last 30 days or a year and send that to the seller, right? And every time you speak, you say, we, we've done this, we've done that. That's what it's about. What if they're like, well, I don't care about we, I wanna, I wanna know about you, because I've gotten that. Well, we all work together, right? So when you get me, you're getting everybody. So in essence, it's always we. As soon as I get your listing, everybody's going to work it. Everybody's going to find a buyer for it. Everybody's working to help get your home sold. So yes, I'm the personal representative to you and your point of communication, but everybody's working with you. So it's the same thing. Okay. Any questions from you guys that are joining us? Let us know where you're at. And once again, for those of you that maybe just joined, we are going to be doing a lunch and learn this Thursday here at our office in Diamond Bar. If you guys are local from 12 to 1. Um, we're going to be talking more about lead generation and maybe even social media strategies and things like that. And being a beast. And, then, and we're also going to be um, sharing with you regarding eXp Realty. I'm not sure if any of you are interested in, in learning more about the company or even joining the team. Um, as you guys know, we are nationwide. We're always adding agents to our team. In fact, we recently added two more that are in this group. We, we added Teresa and Anna. So shout out to you ladies. And I know Edwin's also part of the team. So yeah, if you guys have any questions just regarding EXP in general, we're here to help you and answer any questions regarding the company, anything yep. real estate related. Um, now, before we sign off and finish this, what are some social media tips that you can give? Because, you know, one of the things is that a lot of mm -hmm. people want to get on video. We want to start doing YouTube videos, going yep. live on Facebook, but then we're scared of turning on the camera yep. or what am I even going to talk about? Or what okay, if... Okay, I'll start like this. If you're scared of turning on the camera, leave this group and get out of real estate. I'm so sick and tired of hearing that, right? When all of us were kids, you think you weren't scared to start walking or ride a bike or learn how to swim or do anything else? Did that stop you? No. Then why are we using it as an excuse as grown ass people? Every single one of you in this group, and you can confirm is 18 and over, right? Then that's not an excuse anymore. I don't want to hear it. She doesn't want to hear it either. Now, she won't tell it to you like that, but it's the truth. Remember, every single one of you in this group not only signed up for real estate, so you knew what you were getting into, but you signed up for this boot camp too. So that is no longer an excuse. The moment you became an adult, that excuse of I'm scared is out the window. Why? Because now you're not taking responsibility for your condition. You're pushing it to somebody else. Lloyd, I'm scared. What do I do? Right? Now, maybe you'll ask her instead of me because you know I'm going to give you a straight up response that you maybe don't want, but you think you're going to get a nicer response from Lloyd. That's not a valid excuse. So when it comes to social media, right? I'm assuming everybody in here, most people in this group, you probably speak another language. That already doubles your reach. So you need to be able to produce content in English and Spanish. Like for us, we do content in English and Spanish. So if you speak Spanish or um, Arabic or Italian or fucking Portuguese, whatever it is, you need to make the same content that you make in English in that other language. Now, if you struggle with knowing the real estate terms, study them in your respective languages so you can create both types of content. We, we get a little um, warped in our perception as especially people in America, there's a lot more Spanish speakers in the world as an example than there are English speakers, right? You can verify that, you know, online. It's very simple. So if we make content in English and Spanish, we double, triple, quadruple our reach. 
Number two, and this is the most important thing and I'll leave it at this. Think of how people look for real estate content and think how they're gonna browse, okay? Let's say you guys are in, I don't know, Nashville, Tennessee, okay? And your average price point, I don't know, is three or 400,000. Why not do this? Why not set up a preview where you go and you door knock a neighborhood and then you pick as a part of your prospecting session to go preview a $300,000 house in Nashville and then you record a video. Get your girlfriend, your assistant, a friend of yours to record the video. Make the video, two, three, four minute video showing the house and then name the YouTube video and Facebook video and Instagram video what $300,000 gets you in Nashville, Tennessee. Would somebody interested in moving to Tennessee click on that video? Hell yeah, right? Do property tours that are luxury. That's what we're doing. Ask the listing agents or when you get the listing, do a video for it featuring it. $5 million home, you know, in Atlanta, Georgia, right? We just did one in Atlanta that we listed and we sold in like two weeks. It was $1.9 million, okay? I got that one through social media. We signed it at 6%, not a problem. Think, how are people gonna search and how can I increase the ability for people to find me by featuring content that's related to what I do, but in a way that the consumer is gonna search or if they see it, they'll be interested and they'll click. That's where you have to put your mind at. When you do that, your ability to make content becomes easy. And we don't wanna hear the excuse that you're scared, right? Loida gave me her word, right? If someone says that in the group, she's gonna kick you out. Stop that nonsense, come on. And something that I have said before is that you have to look at social media as a part of your business. And you have to put aside your emotion or you being scared because at the end of the day, you putting yourself out there, whether it's on Instagram or on YouTube, mm -hmm. can bring you business. Yes. Um, right now, I'm about to close on a fourplex property out here where I'm representing both the buyer and the seller and yep. the property sold for 1.5 million. And I represented both parties. That seller came from watching my YouTube videos. And you know what? When I met with them, yeah. no objections. Yeah. It was like straight to the point. I sent them everything signed and no How did questions. you get a luxury listing? It's so scary. <laughs> what did you say? What did you do? Social media. So you guys, and then aside from that, you, obviously a lot of you watch me on YouTube. Recently, I've been posting more on Instagram. I've been doing the reels. If you guys have been watching them, they're just, I, I've taken like a different approach yeah. where I'm now more like, oh, just like humor. Like me. Taking humor into my social media. What I've noticed is that the reels that I've been posting, they get shared like hundreds of times. Yep. They get tens of thousands of views. And what's happening is that now I'm reaching more real estate agents that are now following me. And the great thing about reaching real estate agents is that if they know I'm a real estate agent out here in Southern California, that means if they ever have a referral, I'm gonna be the first person that they think of because they know that I'm active on social media and they're gonna be like, oh yeah, Loida, that's that funny girl that posts the reels in the in the bike. If you know, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you gotta go check out my latest reel. But yeah, social media, you guys have to start putting yourself out there on video and trust me, over time, you're gonna get better. Obviously in the beginning, it's very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You're gonna mess up, you're gonna yep. stumble and stutter and and everything, but that is all just a part of the process. Watch Lloyd's first FISBO call. Uh, yes, watch it, it's cringe. It's an embarrassment, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is.